Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to SLC Ministries. I am so grateful that you are all here with me to hear what God has to say today. Today, I am speaking on the subject of complaining. Um, what type of complainer are you? Now, some of you are probably thinking, what? Type. There's only one type of complaining. But I'm going to tell you that you're wrong. There are three different types of complainers. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines the word complaint as an expression, an expression of grief, pain, or dissatisfaction. An expression. And what is an expression? An expression can be positive or negative. So the word complaint, we automatically think of the word complaint as a negative thing because this is how it's been used year after year, generation after generation, that the word complaint is just an automatic negative thing. And most of the time it is. Most people are complaining negatively. So there are three different types of complainers. There's the chronic complainers. They're always focused on what is wrong. Then you have the venter complainers. They're always focusing on themselves. They like to feel sorry for themselves. They like to sulk in their misery and in their issue. Then you have the positive complainer. This type of complainer only talks about the problem to create a solution. So get this in your head, chronic complainers. And I learned this uh, from a previous pastor who taught this to me. And now I want to uh, teach this to other people and expound on it and what God has told me about it. So once again, we have the chronic complainers. They're always focused on what is wrong. They're always focused on the issue. They can't see the positive uh, light in things. The venture complainer. They're always focusing on themselves. They like to feel sorry for themselves. Woe is me. Then you have the positive complainer. They're only talking about the problem to create a plan or solution. And I'm going to show you examples in the Bible. Of I have my little notes here. That's what I'm looking down at. So examples of chronic complainers. Remember, these are the people who are always focused on what is wrong. Um, if you know anything about the Bible and about the Israelites, when they were uh, rescued out of Egypt, when Moses and Aaron brought them out of Egypt, they all they did was complain. They complained, but they complained in many different ways. But most of the time they were complaining to vent or uh, complain chronically. So in Numbers 14, 27 through 28, the Amplified Version, it says, How long shall I put up with this evil congregation who murmur against me? I have heard the complaints of the Israelites, which they are making against me. Say to them, this is the Lord speaking. Now he's say, talking to Moses. As I live, says the Lord, just what you have spoken in my hearing, I will most certainly do to you. Psalm 78, 18 through 19, verses 18 through 19 in the ERV version. Then they decided to test God by telling him to give them the food they wanted. They complained about him and said, can God give us food in the desert? So what I'm reading here, what we first of all, they're talking about in numbers. As I said, the Israelites, they had a bad habit of just chronically complaining. They they vented complaining too, but they were chronic complainers. They were always complaining about something to God. How many of you in your prayers are just coming to God whining? You have no plan, no solution, no faith. And we talked about faith in a previous video. You just want to always focus on what's wrong. We're out. The Israelites were out here in this desert. God, we still aren't in the promised land. They haven't given God no solution. They, ha- they haven't told Moses or Aaron, hey, we can help clear out the promised land, Canaan, to get rid of these giants and people who are in this land. No, they just kept focusing on what was wrong. Take us. They said uh, Egypt, we'd rather be slaves because at least we always had food to eat. Take us back there. Then we have our venting complainers. They're always focusing on themselves. 
They like to feel sorry for themselves. Psalms 106 verse 25 in the Amplified Version says, but they sulked and complained in their tents and they did not listen to the voice of the Lord. These are venture complainers focusing on themselves, want to feel sorry for themselves. They don't want to figure a way out of a way out of their issue. They want to feel sorry for themselves and sulk and whine. Job 35, 13 of the uh, GW version. And when I'm saying version, these are different versions of the Bible, different. Um, yeah, different versions of the Bible. It says, surely God doesn't listen to idle complaints. The almighty doesn't even pay attention to them. So this really can be kind of uh, an example that a complaint can be positive. It says, surely God doesn't listen to idle complaints. These are the venture complainers. They complain idly. They just want to whine. They want to feel sorry for themselves. How many of you are in a uh, situation right now? And instead of focusing on the positive, you have now become, you have focused on the issue, chronically complaining. Now you've become so worried and focused on the issue now you're just feeling sorry for yourself so now you're venting complaining being a venter complainer and you're in your misery and now your complaining has turned into now depression you went from complaining to sad to angry and now you're in depression and you don't know how to get out of it now you're in a whole different uh, state of mind when you're in depression because you kept focusing on the problem, you kept venting about it. You weren't trying to find a solution. Then we have our positive complainers. I love these type of complainers. They only talk about the problem to create a plan or a solution. In Exodus 16 verses 9 and 11, this is why I'm giving you these biblical, biblical examples to show you how God refers to complaining. We just talked about Job 35 and 13. Surely God doesn't listen to idle complaints because someone has said to me, oh no, there's no such thing. You can't, you can't complain positively, but that's not true. And I'm backing it up with biblical facts. Exodus 16, nine through 11. Moses turned to Aaron and said, bring the people together because the Lord has heard their complaints. And this is the CEV version of the Bible. Verse 11 says, the Lord said to Moses, I have heard my people complain. Now tell them that each evening they will have meat and each morning they will have more than enough bread. Then they will know that I am the Lord, their God. Deuteronomy 26 and 7, the ERV version. Then we pray to the Lord the God of our ancestors and complained about them. And the Lord heard us. He saw our trouble, our hard work and our suffering. Notice it says he saw our trouble, our hard work and our suffering. I had a few verse or a few videos where I talked about sacrificing in faith. When you are crying out to God, a lot of the times those cries are complaints. But it becomes positive complaining if you're putting the work in behind the prayer request that you are giving to God. So you're coming to God with your prayer request and you're not just venting to God. You're not just chronically complaining. You're asking God, complaining to God, positively complaining to God for a solution to the issue you are having. And then you are backing it up by stepping out in faith by sacrificing your will and your flesh to show God that you are positively complaining, that this is a, requ- a cry out for help, that I need you. It says, let's read that again. Then we prayed to the Lord, the God of our ancestors and complained about them. And the Lord heard us. He saw our trouble, our hard work and our suffering. Let's keep going. Psalm 64 and one amplified version. Hear my vote, my voice, O God, in my complaint. Guard my life from the terror of the enemy. Psalms four um, verses four through five in the message version. Complain if you must, but don't lash out. Understand the difference. 
It's okay to complain. The problem is that most of us complain negatively. We complain because we're so focused on the issue, the chronic complainer, or we complain because we just We just want to whine and sulk in our misery. We don't want to do nothing about the problem. We just want to whine and cry and have God feel sorry for us. Positive complainers, once again, complain if you must, but don't lash out. If you're lashing out, now you are negatively complaining. Keep your mouth shut and let your heart do the talking. If you keep your mouth shut, now you won't be chronically complaining. And let your heart do the talking. Build your case before God and wait for his verdict. You're complaining to God. You're doing the action and work behind it. And now you are waiting for God to answer the prayer. Jeremiah 15 and 19, the voice version. If you speak worthy words instead of worthless complaints, comma, I don't have the I don't have the rest of that. I don't know where it went. I forgot what what it said, but that's all we need right there. If you speak worthy words instead of worthless complaints, it's already given you that there's a difference between complaining. There's a difference between your worthless, chronic, venting, complaining and positive complaining. So think in your life. Go back and think of every time you've come before God or even just think this past week. When you were crying out to God, when you were complaining to God with issues in your life, if you're treating God like he's a blue genie and not the God of the universe and God, I have these issues. God, I just want you to do it. I'm not going to do what your word says to step out in faith. I'm not going to do what your word says to follow your com- your commands and to sacrifice what I want for what you want. I'm just going to sit here and negative negatively complain, which is venting and chronic complaining but those who have heard the word and it has taken root in your heart what you're gonna do you're gonna if you love God you'll follow his commands you're gonna sacrifice yourself sacrifice yourself start working on yourself seeing the areas in your life that you need to change what sin are you doing that you need to stop what are you doing that God has been been telling you to do that you are still doing a positive complainer. You're talking about the solution. You're talking about the problem to God. And you're now you're waiting for God to give you a plan or solution. You have to step out on faith and what God has called you to do. Does God want you to come closer to him? What is he asking you specifically to do? Parents, you have to be so careful in how you are role modeling your emotions to your kids. So many of us, stay with me, I'm getting to a point. So many of us, especially uh, in the black community, grow up without fathers. I know there was many times in my life Well, I'm not not even going to just say my life. I've seen it in other people's lives. I've seen it in my life where dad's not there. You're waiting for that phone call. You're waiting for uh, that visit from dad. It's his weekend. It's his time to call. Dad doesn't show up. And now we have mamas doing the same thing. But um, dad, whoever that parent is, that parent doesn't show up. And what I feel like a lot of single mothers get wrong or do wrong is when their child is disappointed because dad didn't show up, something's happened. Instead of you teaching your child to make this moment positive, you show them how to make this moment negative. And what I mean by that, instead of saying, oh, well, your dad didn't call, that's okay. And you show them some how this situation can be positive. You show them that their father not showing up is a bad thing. This is a negative thing. So you're showing them instead of how to be positive in the situation of uh, of the situation of the father not showing up instead of showing them how many things they can be grateful for. They now know that someone not showing up in my life is a negative thing because you teach them that my dad not showing up 
is going to now translate in their lives each time someone disappoints them because this is what you have shown them as a child that when someone doesn't show up it's a negative thing so then they become complainers this is the start of complaining in a child's life because something bad happens in my life someone didn't show up daddy didn't show up mama didn't show up so then you teach them how to complain instead of showing them the light in things who cares if they didn't show up what can you do to change that atmosphere that dis that disappointment how can we you make this a positive outcome because what happens is then these young men, it's not just young men who go through this too. I mean, my father wasn't in my life a lot and he's still not. He's rarely in my life. Um, but how can you show your child as they grow up and then they become men? I'm specifically talking about men, single women with uh, sons. These, When you show them that this is a negative thing that daddy didn't show up, they grow up into these emotional people because you didn't show them how to control their emotions when they were younger. It's important to master your emotions, to master your moments and master your mistakes. It's OK to make mistakes and to learn from it. Daddy's going to make mistakes. Mama's going to make mistakes, but don't keep making the same mistake and then get stuck in a complaining mode and you're focusing on the negative instead of the positive and you're teaching your child that that when that parent doesn't show up that this is a negative thing so then they grow up with all these and now we have all these adult men saying well my daddy wasn't in my life and blah 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 and they have all these woe is me stories because they were taught that this is a bad thing, that my father wasn't in my life and I'm the way that I am because my father isn't in my life. So they have learned from an early age how to complain and to focus on the negative. Yes, that parent is wrong for not showing up. They are wrong, but don't focus on that. You keep raising your child the right way, showing them how to be positive Showing them how to be, showing them how to deal with these negative situa situations instead of teaching them complaining, stuck in, stuck in a complaining mode, focusing on the negative. And it shows because as they grow up into adults, once again, my daddy wasn't in. Now we have all these grown men, even grown women. My daddy wasn't in my life. And, you know, when no one really taught me how to be this, it, it doesn't matter. Let that go. God will teach you. God will teach you how to be uh, everything that you need to be. He will fill the empty voids, the spaces that your father uh, didn't get to fill because he wasn't there. He filled them for me. The Bible doesn't say to trust and rely on people. It says to rely on God. He will fill the empty spaces. He will fill the voids. Get out of that complaining state of mind. Become a positive complainer. My father wasn't in my life. That's okay, though. Because nothing has stopped me beca from becoming everything that God has called me to be. There's other forms and ways of complaining. I'm just pulling out different life scenarios of how we complain just to get y'all to think. Uh, one of the complaining ways is um, or that I. Uh, yeah. One of the ways that we complain. <sighs> Ooh. The world has pushed this propaganda that you can be whatever you want to be. And that's not true. I can't be a scientist. I'm not good in math. I'm not good in science. I had F's, D's and F's in school. By God's grace, he showed me what I was good at. And I ended up still graduating school early. I still was the first one in my family to get a, get a college education. I have a bachelor's and master's degree. I had to do what? God said that I'm good at God blesses us with talent, skills and gifts. I can't be a man no matter what the world tries to push that you can be whatever you feel like being 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 in your emotions, living in your emotions. I can't be a man no matter how much I want to play dress up. If I want to go, you know, with all the uh, transgender stuff going on. I mean, you can try, but you will always be what God has called you to be.
God didn't make any mistakes. And it's just a form of complaining. I'm not happy with what God created me to be. So I'm going to find a way to change it. It's also pushed in um, the plastic surgery mess that's going around. Everyone has something they're not happy about. They want to change. And all it is is just a spirit of complaining and a spirit of ungratefulness. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Everyone has to have a BBL. I'm not happy with my small boobs. I'm going to get bigger boobs. Uh, I've even seen men who aren't happy with their height getting knee surgery so they can be six inches taller. I've never seen so many ungrateful, complaining people in my life. And God is not happy. Well, I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with that. Well, I don't understand. What are you not happy about? You have life. You have breath. But when you focus chronic complainers, when you focus on what's wrong and really it's not, there's nothing wrong with the way you look. It's just because the world pushes this image that there's something wrong with the way you look or who you or, or who you are. So then you become this chronic complainer. You're always focused on what is wrong. You can't see the positive in things. So then you end up going and getting these crazy surgeries to change things that don't even matter. They're not going to matter Women going to get BBLs, getting all, their face all shaved off, getting their eyebrows and eyes lifted all over the Christ place just for it to fall back later on in life, just for a man to still cheat on you because that's not going to change anything. We have got to wake up and get out of the spirit of complaining and ungratefulness because negative complaining comes from being ungrateful. We're going to go over this again. Chronic complainers always focus on what's wrong. Venter complainers focus on themselves and like to feel sorry for themselves. Positive complainers. These are the people that God is going to answer prayers quickly for. They only talk about the problem to create the solution, to create a solution. I'm praying for y'all. I hope that this wakes some of y'all up. As you're going through your lives, as you're going through this year, how are you talking to God in your prayers? Are you just coming to him with just all these vents and complaints, negative complaints? Or are you coming to God with your complaint for him to provide a solution? And then you're stepping out on faith on what you know, what his word says. How are you complaining? I pray that you are blessed. I hope you all have a good day. Please like, share, and subscribe to my TikTok and my YouTube, and I pray that y'all have a good day. Bye-bye.